Hey, Rebel Bankers. I'm your host, Chris Noggle, and welcome back to the Real Estate Money School. Today, I'm going to teach you the untold truth about how money really works. This is a really important topic. And this was, I'm doing this podcast episode because one of my good friends, somebody that I always thought knew a lot about money, we had a conversation and I realized how little he knew about money and how much control he was giving away of his own money, not even knowing he was doing anything wrong. And then when I taught him what you're about to learn, a light bulb went off and he immediately said, I can't believe nobody's ever shown me this. And that's what we're going to get into. But before we get into that, let's talk about all of you and your journey to becoming a rebel banker. That journey is going to begin with lots of knowledge. You've already probably been going on various podcasts, YouTube videos, gathering up all the knowledge, but knowledge, knowledge is not power. It's the application of the knowledge that's the real power. And I got a little challenge for you. I do this every time because I always like to motivate people to take action. So I'm going to give you something for free. And all you need to do is take action. Here's what I'm going to give you. The choice of either one of my books, you can have Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery or The Private Money Guide, completely free. And all you need to do is take action by swiping up one swipe at chrisnoggle.com and click on free book. And there you go. That's what taking action looks like. And that's the kind of action you need to take on what you're about to learn, the untold truth about how money really works. So let's dive right in. First and foremost, what have you been taught to do with money your entire life? You've been taught to give up control of your money. You've been taught to put your money places and just leave it sit. And where do most people put their paycheck, the money they earn? Did you say the bank? How about the bank? Just like behind me, if you're watching the video, I've got a bank and the ways banks move money. And we're going to talk about that in a second, but that's what most people do. They get paid, they put the money in the bank, and then they go out and they spend money. But then what do they do? Well, they buy things, right? We all have things that we want. We have goals. We want new cars, bigger houses, real estate investments, all these different things, which most of us will go to the bank and then borrow money from the bank. And what are we actually doing in that? Well, let's take one step back. First and foremost, what is money? If I were to ask all of you what money really is, what would you say? Well, you'd all have different answers, but here's what money is. Money is nothing more than a means of exchange. Think about it. Money for food, food for money. Money for car, car for money. Money for house, house for money. All we do is exchange money or currency for things that we want, for goods and services. That's all it is. Money is nothing more than a means of exchange. And I don't care if the money you're holding looks like this $100 bill that I'm holding right now. It could be green. It could be anything. It could be gold or silver. Money is a means of exchange. Secondarily, is your money worth more today or is it worth more in the future? Think about that. Is your money worth more today or is it worth more in the future? The answer is your money is worth more today. It's worth the most amount it's ever going to be worth right now. It's not going to be worth more in the future because inflation is going to eat that money away. Over the last 50, 60 years, your money has declined in value over 80% percent because of inflation. So if your money's worth the most today, why would you ever want to give up control of your best dollars and leave that money sit? But let's keep going. How about taxes? Are taxes going up, down, or are they just going to stay the same? Well, most people right now, I think it's unconditional, say taxes are going up. So if you put your money away and you give up control to the bank, what are you doing? Well, you're first off giving up your best dollars, your most valuable dollars that could do you the most good today. You're giving that up and just putting it in a bank and leaving whatever you don't spend sit in that bank account. Don't, don't tell me you're not doing this. It's exactly what you're doing. You put the money in there and whatever you don't spend just sits in the bank. And, and who's making the money on that? The bank is. And we're going to cover that in a second. Lastly, let me ask you this question. When you have a good job, what are you taught to do at that job? What are you taught to do with your money that you make? Well, most of you probably are taught to put your money into that employer-sponsored retirement plan, that 401k, right? I know my grandmother back when you know I was younger, she would always say to me, Chris, when you get a job, get a good job, ask them if they've got a 401k. 
And then if they do ask them, do you match? And I'm like, well, grandma, what is that match thing? She said, well, when you put money in that 401k, your employer will match up to a certain percentage. It's free money. And truthfully, it is. And that's what we've been taught to do. And I remember my first good big boy job, I had a 401k and I'm like, do you match? Wow, you match 3%. How much do I have to put in to get that match? Six, perfect. I want to put six in to get the 3% free, the match. That's what we're taught to do. But think about what we just talked about. We just talked about your dollars being worth the most today. And your dollars are nothing more than a means of exchange to buy goods and services. So what we're actually taught to do is to go out, work hard for this money, this $100 bill I'm holding, we go out and we work hard for that money. And then we're paid based on the hours we put into that job. And those, those hours are traded for dollars. We are always taught to go out, work for money. We work and we exchange hours for dollars and that's backwards. The wealthy don't do that with their money. They did that until they learn differently. And what do they do? They don't work harder for dollars. They work smarter and they make their money work harder. That's what they do. And I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that. The untold truth about money comes down to changing just one thing. That one change is where your money goes first. Right now, where's your money going first? In the bank, somebody else's bank. Or maybe even before you get the money from your job, you're giving up control of that money and putting it into a 401k or an employer-sponsored retirement plan. They come in many shapes and sizes. And when you do that, you are literally defying everything we just decided was the truth. Your money's worth the most today. Taxes are going to go up. And you're better served to exchange your monies today when they're worth the most, right? So what do we do with a 401k? We give up control of those dollars. We put them in that 401k. We invest that money in the markets. Hopefully the markets go up, but what do they really do? They go up, down, up, down, up, down. Over a long haul, they go up. But what also goes up? Taxes. And then what goes down? The value of your money. So what we're actually doing by putting money in a 401k, anything above and beyond that match, that free money, any dollars you're putting into the 401k, above and beyond that, you're literally defying the rules of how money really works. What you're actually doing is you're doing things with your money that you would never ever do with things that money buys. How many of you would ever go to the grocery store, buy a loaf of bread, come home, put the loaf of bread in your freezer, shut the door, but then wait five, 10, or 15 years, come back, open that freezer door and take out that loaf of bread and be excited about eating that freezer burn lumped a lump of whatever it is at that time. Heck no, you wouldn't eat that bread. You'd throw it in the garbage. How many of you would go out and buy your dream car? Right now, you got the money. You go buy your dream car. And just as you're about to be handed the keys, you say to the dealer or whoever you're buying it from, you say, whoa, hold on a second. I can't drive this car for five, 10 or 15 years. That's stupid. You would never do that. Would you ever go out and buy your dream house for your significant other, your wife or your husband? You buy your dream house and then you wait five, 10 or 15 years to move into the house. Imagine saying that to your significant other. Honey, we just, we, we've met our big goal. We just bought our dream house. But wait, we can't move in for five, 10 or 15 years, sweetie. I'm sorry. That marriage, I'm pointing to my ring wouldn't be anymore. You'd be divorced. But that's what you do with your money. We do things with money we would never, ever do with things that money buys. I'm just trying to get you to think about what's really going on here. Now, let's get back to why we do these things. We do the things that we just went over because that's what somebody told you to do it, to do. Who is that somebody? People that were, you know, passing down the knowledge that they've learned, which is not the right knowledge is not the knowledge of what the wealthy do with money. My grandmother, okay? Who else do you get your knowledge from? Bankers. Who else do you get knowledge from? Financial advisors, financial professionals, okay? All of them have something to gain by you giving up control of your money to them. So let's take a second and let's talk about what you're giving up, okay? Right behind me, I've got a picture of a bank. And then there's you right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that you make a deposit in that bank of $100,000. So any of you that are watching this, I'm showing $100,000 being deposited in the bank. And what does the bank give you for that deposit? 
Well, the bank pays you interest. Well, some of you are like, no, my bank doesn't give me interest. Well, strange times we are in, that's for sure. But you know, usually a savings account, a money market, or sometimes even a checking account will pay you interest. But let's pretend you found yourself a really, really good bank that pays you 4%. Now, how many of you would be excited about going into that really, really good bank, depositing your money, which is already a good feeling, right? Does, do any of you not feel good about taking your money and depositing it in the bank? That feels good, right? And on your way out, you grab one of those suckers from the little coffee mug and you, you start enjoying it and you read this, the little wrapper that it's got on it. It says dumb, dumb, doesn't it? I went to a bank yesterday and of course that bank had dumb, dumb suckers. They're sending us a message. So, but we found ourselves a good bank we, we kind of just throw the wrapper out. We're like, oh, I'm not dumb. That's just a coincidence. Not a coincidence at all because the bank's paying you 4%. But what does the bank do with your money when you deposit it there? Does the bank take your money and put it in a little box in the back with your name on it and just leave it sit there until you come back? And you're thinking in your mind, I just made a deposit. Oh, I, want, I might come back tomorrow and get that money. I might come back a week or a month or heck, maybe it'll be a year before I need that money. That bank must have my money back in that little box. Absolutely not. The bank doesn't put your money in that little box. What does the bank actually do? The bank moves your money in those little glass cubicles behind you. What are they doing? They're lending that money out to someone like your neighbor to buy a house. Your neighbor buys a house. They take your money and everybody else's deposit. They take that money and they loan that money back out so somebody can buy goods and services. Let's just assume it's a house. The neighbor gets the keys and then the seller of the house does what? takes the proceeds of that sale and puts the money right back in the bank. So the bank's got another problem because every time you make a deposit into the bank, that's a liability to the bank. It's an asset to you because it's your money being loaned to the bank essentially, but the bank takes liabilities and turns them into assets the same way you should, but you haven't learned how to do this. And the bank moves that money back out and let's just assume that they're paying you four and they lend that money out to your neighbor at seven. They're making a spread. Let's keep going. The seller puts the money back in the bank. The bank wants to get that money moving again, loans it out on somebody's BMW that they just bought. They just bought a BMW and it's, the bank loans that car loan. The car dealer gets paid and the car dealer deposits the money. But the bank charges, let's just assume, 8% on that car. Don't get hung up on the numbers, folks. The bank's not paying you four and the bank's probably not charging you eight for the car loans, although I've seen them charge eight. But then the bank's got the money from the car, the dealer that just deposited the money and they loan it back out for your home remodel. So now you're remodeling your kitchen for your significant other. You pay the contractors. What do the contractors do with the money? They deposit it in the bank. All these people are depositing the money back in the bank. Why? Because that's what they were taught to do. Then that home remodel loan costs 9%. Remember, they're paying you four and charging you nine. Then you go to Las Vegas, you rack up the credit cards, maybe you put it all on black and it hits red, doesn't matter how it happens. Now you want a debt consolidation loan to pay those nasty credit card debts off. So what do you do? You go to the bank, you beg and plead with them to give you a debt consolidation loan, which is unsecured. The bank says, sure, we'll do it, but we're gonna charge you 12% on that loan because it's unsecured. More risk for the bank, more of a return that you have to pay. The interest goes up, remember, Visa deposits the money back in the bank and around and around we go. Let's just do the math here. So seven minus four is what? Three, right? Okay, four minus eight is four. So if we add all these numbers up, the spread between what the bank's paying you a four and what they're charging, the 7%, the 8%, the 9%, the 12%, you will come up with 20%. So the bank is making 20% on the money that you left there. Now, let me ask you this question. How much risk did the bank take on all these things? You deposited your money there and you felt good about it and you left with a dumb, dumb sucker to make you even feel better. Then what did the bank do? It loaned the money out over and over again and it made 20%, but how much risk did the bank take? Not much. It's your money, not theirs. The only risk they take is that somebody doesn't pay, but almost all of these loans are secured by an asset. Okay, how much, how much control did you have in this? Were you able to tell the bank, hey, I don't want my money lent out on that BMW. I only want to lend on houses. You didn't have any control of that. So who was in control of every one of those transactions we just talked about? If you said the bank, you're absolutely correct. The bank was 100% 
in control of every one of these transactions. But let me go one bonus round. How many of you saw a mathematical problem with this? Did the bank really make 20% or did the bank make more? Well, if we did the math, the bank made 20%, but the bank didn't make 20%. The bank made a lot more than 20%. The bank paid you four and the bank made 20. That is five times more than you made, which is 500%. The bank made 500% more than you did on your money. All I want you to do is start thinking about what's really going on there. The bank's in control. The bank's not taking on hardly any risk. The bank is using your money that you were taught to leave there, which is your best dollars that you just gave up control of to the bank, and the bank is making all the money. So now let me ask you this. Does that sound like a winning proposition for you or for the bank? Any of you that said the bank, you are absolutely correct. So now what I want to teach you, the untold truth about money is very simple. It involves you changing just one thing, adding one step. Do you want to know what that is? Simple. Change where your money goes first. If what you're doing with your money right now is making the bank 500% more than you, then we need to take that money back and be back in control of our money. So we got to change where that money goes first. So now you need to become your own bank. So what do the wealthy do with money that you're not? Exactly what I just said. They added one step and they changed where their money went first. And where does their money go if it's not going to the bank? I'll tell you where it goes first. It goes to giant mutually owned insurance companies into a very specially designed and engineered policy that is called a whole life policy. Now, this isn't the whole life policy that you go to your life insurance store and buy. This isn't the one your advisor has told you about. This isn't the one that the banks try to sell you. This is something completely different that doesn't even look like life insurance. You know what it looks like? You account. That's right, folks. So if the bank account that you're putting your money in isn't paying you 4%, then you're putting your money in the wrong place. Because you know what the banks or the insurance companies are paying on your money that you put into that specially designed and engineered whole life? 4%. As of 2021, That'll change next year, but right now it's 4%. So if you're not making 4% guaranteed on your money, then I think this one change will help you tremendously. But let's talk about a couple other things. Why would most people not know about this? How come you don't know about privatized banking? How come you don't know about being your own bank? Why isn't your advisor, your banker, or your family told you about this? Simple. The advisors and the bankers probably don't know about it. But more importantly, they can't get paid nearly what they would get paid by telling you to do the opposite. You want to know how I know this? Who do you think the number one purchaser in the world is of the specially designed and engineered whole lives? Can anyone guess? It's none other than traditional banks. The same banks where you deposit your money. That is who the number one purchaser of the specially designed and engineered whole life policies is. Don't believe me? Well, it makes perfect sense because you've never been told this. You're probably right now thinking that sounds too good to be true. This must be a scam. Why haven't I heard this? Google it. Everybody knows about Google. Go on to Google and type in bully, B-O-L-I. Try it. Type in bully into your Google and let's just see what comes up. Hold on. I'll just tell you what comes up. Hundreds and hundreds of pages will come up showing you how much money banks own in whole life insurance. But you see, they don't call it whole life insurance. So how would you ever know that it's whole life? BOLI stands for bank owned life insurance. Okay. Commonly used by the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Walt Disney's, the Ray Crocs, all of the wealthy people, all the way up to our current president, Biden, and you know the late uh, McCain, all use this system. They changed one thing. And that one change is where their money went first. But you don't know about this. Because if you did, you would have changed that one thing a long time ago. You would have been making a guaranteed 4% on your money and you would have been in control of your money. But let's go one step further. How do we take back the money that we're giving away to everybody else? It's simple, folks. I just told you how. Be the bank. Bonus round. Let me explain one other reason why the wealthy do this and why the banks do this. 
Your current bank account, I want to ask you a question real quick. And I'm going to draw it on the board here. In your current account, let's just assume that you put $10,000 in your current bank account. And for those of you just listening, just listen along. But for those of you watching, you're going to see the visuals. If you put 10 grand into your regular bank, and let's pretend your bank pays the same guaranteed interest rate as the insurance company is doing right now, and that's 4%. Now, I know none of you have a bank paying you 4%, but let's just pretend that you did find yourself a really good bank that paid you 4%. Now, let's just say you go out and you find something you want to buy that normally you would have financed because you didn't have the money, but you have the money, you have the 10 grand. And you take the 10 grand out of your bank account to go buy this used automobile that you got a great deal on, okay? So you just bought this really fancy used automobile that I just drew on the thing. We'll put a spoiler on that just to make it extra special. You got yourself an automobile, okay? Did your bank continue paying you 4% on the 10,000 that you had in the account that you took out for the car? Because remember, you took the 10K out to buy the car. Does your bank still pay you 4% on that $10,000 that you no longer have in your account? Heck no, Chris, that's stupid. Why would the bank pay me 4% on the 10,000 when I took the 10,000 out? Oh, silly me, yeah, that's right. That doesn't make any sense. But you see, if you understand privatized banking and what I'm about to teach you, that one change, you will understand how to earn uninterrupted compound interest on every dollar that you deposit into your specially designed and engineered whole life. So now stay with me. Let's change one thing. Let's pretend that this 10,000 now is going into that private bank. And what is the private bank that I'm talking about? It is a specially designed and engineered whole life policy, not like the one that you're used to. So now you got the money in this specially designed and engineered whole life. So you put 10 grand in there. Now that 4% is guaranteed contractually, they're going to pay you 4%. And just a disclaimer, that is for 2021. 2022, this number is going to change. It will go down, but it won't go down if you lock in the 4% contractually. So you got a 4% guarantee, but what else? I did say that these are mutually owned insurance companies. So also mutually owned insurance companies pay you a dividend every year. Now, even though right now we're in the lowest interest rate cycle we've ever been in, and insur the insurance companies are paying the lowest dividends they have in at least 30 years, dividends are about 2% for some of the companies that work for this. And not all mutually owned life insurance companies work for what I'm telling you. These are very specially designed and engineered. I've already said that. So we got 10 grand earning 4% plus now I can get a 2% dividend. Wow, man, I'm making 6% on that money. You're darn right. And what did I do? All I did is change one thing, the same thing the wealthy did. Now let's buy an automobile. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the regular bank that we agreed would never pay you that 4% interest when you took the money out. So here's what we're going to do with the insurance company, folks. So when we're going to take the money out, we're going to do the same darn thing, okay? We're going to take that money out to buy the car. Let's just assume we're going to take 10, the 10 grand we put in, we're going to take that money out. But we're not going to take a withdrawal. We're going to take a loan. We're going to take a loan from the insurance company for 10000 Now, as soon as I say that, you're like, wait, 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 Chris. Loan is bad. But what if I told you that this, this really good private bank that you just found, which is none other than an insurance company, agreed to allow you to take that loan and that loan never needed to be paid back? Does that make sense? What if the $10,000 loan you took out from the insurance company, what if you never had to pay that 10 grand back? That wouldn't make sense. Then why do they call it a loan? Because it is a loan. The reason it doesn't have to be paid back is the insurance company promised you two things. Number one, they promised you a guaranteed 4% as of 2021 or prior years. Second thing they promised is a debt benefit that will be paid out someday when you die. Now, let's just assume for simple math that your debt benefit's $100,000 and you deposited $10,000 into this private bank, okay? When you took the $10,000 loan from the insurance company, what the insurance company actually did is they didn't take the $10,000 from your account. Your $10,000 sits in your account still, but you're holding ten dollars So where did that ten dollars come from? The insurance company's general account. But the insurance company's general account doesn't ask for the ten dollars back. But that's not really true. 
they do want that 10 grand back, but you know where they're going to take it from? They're going to take it from your death benefit. So all the insurance company is really doing, as I'm drawing here, the insurance company is giving you part of your death benefit in the form of a loan early. So before you pass away, because I've never met a person in my life that cares more about the money that somebody has the day I die more than I care about the money that I have today to use to live and enjoy my life. How about you? Do you care more about the money somebody's going to get the day you die? Or do you care more about the money you have today to live life and enjoy? I think you all said live life and enjoy it, right? So let's get back to this. So the $10,000 loan that we took out to buy this awesome automobile was nothing more than a loan from the insurance company, but the insurance company was just advancing part of my debt benefit to me to buy this car. Now this loan, how many of you, when you take a loan from the bank, how many of you have to pay interest on that loan? All of you. The bank isn't giving free money out. Well, your bank, your private bank that I'm talking about doesn't give free money either. You got to treat your money the same way as you treat the bank's money. And the bank charges you interest. So therefore, this loan, they're also going to charge you interest. Right now, that interest rate for most of the insurance companies is 5%, simple interest. So now let's talk about this. Now, I don't want to confuse you with the numbers, but it's simple. If you're making six and the insurance company is charging you five, how much would you actually come out with net at the end of the day? Well, if any of you just did the math, six minus five is plus one. So from the simple math, you put 10 grand in, you took 10 grand out to buy a car, the insurance company charges you five, but the insurance company never took the money out of your account, they took it out of their general account, a loan against your debt benefit. So you're making six with dividend, if assuming that dividends stay at that 2%, what does you make? You made 1% spread. How many of you have a bank that allows you to take your money, use your money, and still pays you interest on all of that money. None of you. But if you just change one thing, if you just learn the untold truth about money, what the wealthy know and what the banks know and what all these people know that you don't is this. They understand something called uninterrupted compound interest. What I just showed you is exactly what Albert Einstein talked about when he talked about compound interest. He called it the eighth wonder of the world, the most powerful thing in the universe. Those that understand it, earn it. Those that don't, pay it. What side of that equation are you on? Do you understand it and earn it? Or do you not understand it and pay it? Well, I bet most, most of you aren't doing this to buy cars. I bet you most of you aren't doing this to pay off your debts to invest your money, to do different things. I bet you most of you are buying cars with loans. You're going to the bank where you deposited that money, where you gave up control. You're going to the traditional bank. You're taking a loan that is charging you interest, very much like your bank. When you take a loan from your bank, you're paying interest there. So let's just assume the bank is charging you interest here. But what happens here? Is your bank paying you 4%? No. When you take a loan from a regular bank, they charge you a monthly payment. Your bank doesn't charge you a monthly payment. It does charge you interest, but you don't have to pay it monthly. You can pay it once a year. You can pay it anytime you want. Why? How come, how come I can pay it anytime I want, but when I borrow money from a, a regular traditional bank, I'm on their terms. We already covered this. When you use the traditional bank, when you make deposits, the bank's in control of your money, not you. When you take a loan from the traditional bank, the bank is in control of that loan. When you change one thing, and that one thing is where your money goes first. You are in control because this is your bank and this is your loan from your bank. You are in control of the terms. You are in control of the repayment schedule. If you took 10 grand from your bank to buy a car, the same 10 grand you would have borrowed from somebody else's bank. Let's just assume a $10,000 loan was $150 a month car payment. You would have no problem paying somebody else's bank $150 a month because you just have to. That's just what you've been trained to do. So when you take a loan from your bank, should you just mimic what the bank does and do the same thing? Absolutely. You should be an honest banker. You took 10 grand from your bank. Should you not pay your bank $150 a month? You absolutely should, but there's a big difference. Your bank 
never stopped earning interest and dividends on that deposit you made. Their bank, you never earned any interest, period. You're just paying interest because you don't understand compound interest. What I just said, you are not, oh, therefore you pay interest. If you're in the know, you earn interest. This $150 car payment that you, that you normally would just have borrowed from the bank, if you pay this back to your bank, you are now earning uninterrupted compound interest on your money. You are now making monthly payments back to your bank, which puts you in full control. And that $150 car payment you made back to your bank, folks, that's like you saving an extra $150. You're recapturing and recycling the money you're giving away today by just putting it back into your bank. Do you see the significance of this? Do you see why this is the untold truth about money? This is why the wealthy do this, because they understand this. You now understand this, but you don't understand enough. So what I want to do is tell you how to understand how this really works. All you need to do is go to my website. Remember earlier, I told you to take action. So here, now I'm going to tell you to take action again. Go to chrisnoggle.com, the same place you were going to get the book. And by the way, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, that one book I mentioned, is all about privatized banking, what the wealthy do with money. Secondarily, why don't you go an additional? Why don't you be an overachiever today? Go to free resources and watch a 90-minute video on how this works. And after that 90-minute video, you're going to have questions. So schedule a call with me and my team, and we'll answer all of your questions about how being your own bank, privatized banking, and a concept called the infinite banking concept can work in your favor, put you back in control of your money, make it so that you don't have to work harder or work longer for your money. You can simply make your money work harder for you. And that is the definition of you working smarter. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Real Estate Money School and how you can take back control of your money by learning the untold truth about how money works. We'll see you on the next episode. And don't forget, take action on what you just learned and watch the 90-minute video. And when you have questions, I'll answer them. We'll see you soon.